dirty. Stop it. Stop it. You're not starting that again. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Brush Show um, live presentation and we're going to continue working up. Oh, there goes my dog again. Sorry about that. Let me mute. Sorry about that. There is a dog in our neighborhood that my dog just does not like. Um, if everybody could let me know that you can hear me and my dog. I can um, hear you both. <laughs> you hear my mouthy dog? <laughs> yes. Oh, she is something. All right. So you can hear me and you're on Zoom. Is there's anybody over on um, YouTube? If you can let me know that you can hear me also. That would be fabulous. All right. Let me get this stuff out of the way. There. Okay. All right, is that better? Can you hear me now over on Facebook and on, no, not Facebook, over on um, YouTube? Let me know if there's somebody on, if you can uh, hear me. That would be wonderful. So today we're going to continue on with our um, rock, rocky road. It's what I call this landscape. And we want to add our trees in and then add some of the, um, the leaves in today. I think that's about as far as we're actually going to get with, um, with this tonight. But I also kind of wanted to share a little bit about what I use to make trees. Again, this is an extra sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. Uh, my favorite watercolor paper to use, especially with brusho, and um, there was a discussion in brusho fun today. If you anybody saw that about using masking fluid on it, and it lifts some of the fibers of the paper. With 
the Stonehenge Aqua, you definitely have to um, make sure the paper is totally dry before you go in and lift any of the masking fluid. If you don't, what it does, it lifts particles of the paper or it can actually rip your paper. So you want to make sure, let me turn my phone off, that before you start lifting, and I always use, um, I have no idea what this is called. It's to lift masking fluid. And it works easier than taking your finger and rubbing. But you definitely want to make sure your paper is totally dry before you ever lift masking fluid off of Stonehenge Aqua. It's a natural rag paper, and it just seems to be softer um, than like the, who can I compare it to, arches. It, it just seems softer. The sizing on it is a little softer. So when I go to make trees, or a lot of times I will use um, masking fluid, I want a fine line, I'll use a dip pen. And these are liner brushes that have long bristles, and I can't tell you what size they are. I have them in three different sizes, but you can see how worn they are and the ferrules are even getting loose on them. Um, don't do what I do. I have a tendency of throwing my brushes in the water to get them nice and soft, and they kind of sit there, and um, this is what happens. They swell, then they start to um, get loose in the ferrule when they shrink, and the paint all kind of chips off. But I like to use those, these types of liners to do uh, trees, any straight lines. These are also some of my most favorite brushes. They, these two are called faux sables, or no, excuse me, faux squirrel, and they're a liner with an auxiliary reserve. You can see near the ferrule the brush is thicker, and then it comes to a point. These hold a lot of water. These are great brushes. What this brand is that? They are made in Thailand, so they're not expensive brushes. They're called Faux Sable. 1827 is this one. Liner AUX Reserve by Dynasty. This is the same, just a smaller one. This one, it looks like it's A-L-V-A-B-O C-A-S-T-A-G-N-E-T um, and it's a size 8. It's a little thicker. It's a different brand but the same type of brush. It has more hair, shorter hair, and then they put the longer hairs that come to a point on the outside. These are great brushes. I can also use these to make straight lines. These are by um, L-A-N-G, I think it is, Nickel, and they're combo, they have squirrel in them. This one's pretty new. This one is like one of my most favorite brushes. And again, you can see it's all chipped off. This one, the ferrule is still pretty tight, but I can get these wet and I can rub them and get them to a very fine chiseled edge. If you can see the, how chiseled that is. Now, I have no idea where you would buy these from. Um, I used to take watercolor classes from um, a friend and he would get these and he would sell them. Um, 
So I don't know. I, I really don't know if you could get these like from Amazon or Dick Blick, any you know where you could get them. But they're just a mixture of a, a squirrel and probably synthetic. It's called a combo. And this is a, a, a size 12. They're both 12s. But I can get a really sharp chiseled edge. I can also use them full bodied with water and use them to lay a lot of water down, almost like a wash brush. So that's a fun one to use. So I thought we would just play around a little bit and kind of see how to do some trees before we lay the trees in on our painting. I've mixed just a little in one of these cups. Um, I use these cups with alcohol inks and they're really inexpensive. I just picked them up off of um, Amazon. But they're pretty good that you can put a little bit of water in and you can add some of your crystals and dilute it down. I also, if I'm going to be doing a lot of using bleach, I can add a little bit of bleach and you know put my water in so they're just kind of fun to use and to have them handy so with the dip pen that's all you do is you dip it in and depending on the size of the tip you can get quite a bit of length and I don't know if you can see how I'm kind of going and then I stop and then I start and what that does it gives like little areas that's a great place to start a branch from You can do the same on the other side. So it's just kind of a fun way to get a really fine line. You can do this with your masking fluid. Say this was masking fluid and I wanted to do um, some white trees in the background. If you push too hard, it separates the point. That's what I'm doing. So you kind of want to be light-handed. So you could get some shrubs, different things in the background. Now, depending on the size of the tip, is the thickness of the line that you're going to get. I don't have any really fat tips or wide tips, so... Um, you probably could get some really cool effects with the wider tips and get a thicker line. I just rinse these off and then I wipe them off so they don't rust. Now, with the liner brushes, the same thing. And I just dip it in and I tap it on the side. I always use my pinky kind of to give me some leverage. And you get a lot more length with these because they hold so much of the water in the pigment. Again, you can get the wild branches. And what you want to do is make sure you let this all dry before you stick your finger in it. And then the wider, of course, holds a lot more water. So you're going to get a 
a wider trunk of your tree. And as you get into the top of the paper, lighten up your pressure so that it's coming more to a point. With these, because they hold so much water, they really will go a long time. Before running out, you can see how fine and I can just keep going with it because it has that reserve at the ferrule. Let's try the fatter brush. You can see, I don't know how much water that's holding. But again, you're going to get a lot of fluid. And when you create a tree, and I was taught this a long time ago, trees are kind of like a clock and you really don't go off and do another branch. Let's say we're going to do another branch on this side. You don't really go off exactly across. So you kind of think of it as a clock and you have your 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, four o'clock. You can do the same, but I stagger them. So 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, nine o'clock, eight o'clock, and then you can make branches off of those. So that's with the larger size 8 brush with the reserve well of hair. Now, where is my good brush? Here it is. Now this brush, because it holds a lot of water, it's going to be harder on here. And I'm pushing pretty hard. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm getting a nice chiseled edge. And if I hold that chisel edge, and I'm using my pinky for leverage. You can see how fine I can actually get with that brush on the chiseled edge. The harder you push, the fatter of a trunk you can get. So those are basically the ways that I like to make trees. 
if I'm using a brush. And I think maybe the um, next, once we have this painting done, the next one we'll do is maybe trees and use a palette knife. And I did the, the tree that I showed you last week. Oops. This tree is done with a palette knife. So I think maybe we'll, we'll look at doing that in one of the next segments. So practice making trees. I used to be so afraid of going in and making a tree. I would almost panic if I had to, um, you know, to create a tree. But if you practice and, you know, if you're sitting there, even if you're sitting watching TV and you just have a piece of, you know, just any paper, you don't even have to have um, pigment. You can just make trees with water and just practice how you're making your trees. Once you get comfortable making them, it's so much more fun when you're doing a painting and you're not going, oh my gosh, you know, I've got to do trees. I hate trees. And that was me. I just, I just hated doing trees. But you can practice. Um, you could even practice with a pencil. Let's see, do I have a pencil? Um, here. Same concept. Hold the pencil, the tip, your little finger to guide. And make trees on paper. And I love to give little branches that come out and they go down. It just gives the painting a little character. So before we move on to our actual painting, does anybody have any questions? Today, luckily, I have both chats up, so I'm pretty sure I can um, answer any questions that come up. Um, who in the, the, that's on absolutely despises making trees? Anyone here? No, you. Okay. So let's get rid of that so I don't spill that. And I'm really pleased. There we are. We're back in focus. I'm really pleased with how these rocks turned out. And I thought I was going to go in and do some bleaching. I kind of don't think I'm going to. I may add a dark strip in my road. I may wash this out a little bit more so it bleeds out. Remember, we use the um, Elegant Writers to add some of the shadows in because it bleeds out and it adds the additional colors that are in there. So I was thinking about this today and in the painting that's on the screen that you can see, of course I use browns on the rocks and I use browns in the trunks of the trees. So I'm kind of thinking, um, I really don't want to introduce brown unless it's one of these, maybe the orangey browns in for my trees. But I think I'm going to stick with my, my gray colors do my trunks of my trees in the gray. It's going to add other colors to it. And then I think, let's see. I think because of using the gray, I'll definitely use the um, probably lemon. I'm thinking I want a lighter color. So it was between lemon and yellow. And 
I'm thinking there's more of the yellow of the lemon in the gray than there is of the yellow. So I think we'll use lemon for the lighter color. I have that out. And then our If we're using the lemon, I don't think I want to go as light as the lime green. I think I'll use the leaf green. We talked last week that you wanted it more of a summer type of leaves. So I think I'll go with the leaf green. Now I do want to add some depth into my leaves. And I want to carry through with the same type of color scheme. And after this dried, I'm really thinking the Prussian blue is the closest in the coloring of the rocks. More so than the only other one would be the Oast blue. And I just don't think that's gray enough. So let's go with the Prussian blue, and I have that pulled out. One of my problems is in finding any colors um, in my container. I don't know if anybody else runs into that, but it's always an issue. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. The lemon, Prussian blue, leaf green, and then the gray for the trunks of the trees. And I think I will go with the medium size squirrel with the reserve. Jan, I have a question. Yes. If you don't have any gray, is there anything you can substitute? Sure, you could use any of the browns. You could use... Um, do you have black? I have black, light brown, and dark brown. You could use any of those. My rocks and the one in the picture, that was done with the, one of the browns. Gosh, I did that so long ago. I think you said it was light brown. Probably the light brown. It looks a little lighter. And then I went in with um, one of the blues, probably Prussian blue, to darken some of it. It was Prussian blue. You but you have the elegant writer in there also, which gave a blue cast. Yep, yep. So you have that also, don't you, Janet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you could go in with that. Okay, thanks. I, yeah, I don't think I would suggest using the elegant writer for your trunks of your trees. Right, because they'll um, bleed out. Yeah, the, well, the thing is, I'm going to put my trunks in first, then sprinkle, and then I'm going to spray. I like okay. to have them kind of diffuse out, but I think with the Elegant Writer, I play with it on a sample sheet and see what look you would get. Um, let's try it. My Elegant Writers are probably starting to dry out. Let's see if one of them is better. That's finer. I've had these so long. That's even finer. And let's spray it and see what happens. Yeah, it really diffuses out. If you could get the look down here at the bottom where I, I've held the spray a little further away, that would be pretty. I'm not a fan of where it bleeds out quite that much for a tree. But you could play with it. You know, I'm all about playing and having fun. But look at those colors. That is really pretty. I know, that's what impressed me about it. Yeah. That's why, that's why I like brush out. Yeah, I know. I love the colors yeah. in brush oak. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the watercolors that are heavily pigmented, uh, the Primatech colors, I love those. 
You like those too? Yeah. Do you? I've not tried those. Um, oh, they're awesome. Yeah, they're pretty granulating, and I like that look. Yeah. I have... Um, Oh, Doc P.H. Martin, Doc P.H. Martins, um, not the Radiant, I have the other ones, and they're, they're pretty pigmented, and those are fun to play with, too. All right, so now I've lost this again. Come on. There we go. So let's, uh, I'm going to make a puddle of the gray. And I want it pretty heavy in the brush, but I want a lot of water in this so that it's not too pigmented. But I do, you can see it's, it's pretty well, it's dripping off. I did take a brush and I brushed it off so that I could hopefully get a lot of those pigments off of the paper. And I have a tendency, always, I'm right-handed, and I always start, this is my right side, I know it's left for you guys, it's, it's a mirrored image, but I always do that, and then I run my hands through it. So try to work in the opposite direction of whether you're right-handed or left-handed so that you're not dragging your hand through the wet pigment. And... I'm just going to start I want to kind of anchor it down here a little bit I don't want it dripping on the paper And if it's easier for you to turn your paper, go ahead and do that. I like to run my trees up off of the paper now for some reason I've started doing that I know in the one on the, the screen I did not do that so I'll try not to and see now I went to move over to put another tree over Just a little one there. And let's put a couple trees over on this side. And I think I want this one to go over the road. And there she goes again.
kind of raggedy old trees. Now, if you want some of them a little thicker, you can go in and thicken them up a little bit. When I spray these, they're going to fuse out. So I want to let them dry a little bit. So in the meantime, if you want to go in and darken some of these areas up, you can. and I'm just randomly going in. Again, just randomly going in and darking a few areas here and there. Just kind of killing some time for everything to kind of dry. Anchoring that tree down in the rocks. And then I want to see if I can bleed these out just a little more after they've dried. I'm not sure if the Elegant Writer will bleed out anymore. The water will reactivate it. It is a little bit. And I think I want to add, since this is just an old dirt road, I want to add just a little bit of a path in the center. And I can use this brush to add more water. and it's not bleeding out too much now that it's dry. I don't know. Yeah, once it dries, it uh, stays pretty permanent. Seems to be. You know, we got it wet last week. We bled it out. And now that it's dry, it's really not bleeding out a lot. So what I want to do is I'm not a fan of how I have the hard lines. So I want to break those lines up just a little bit. Just to give it a little more depth. I don't know if that helps or not, but. Hmm. 
Okay, how are we doing on time? Are we doing pretty good? Just kind of rolling that around a little bit. So now that I have these are fairly dry, I want to cover my rocks up because I don't want a lot of the colors from the leaves going down. I don't mind if there's some goes down into those rocks, but I just want to try and keep more of the leaf color up at the top. So I'm just kind of covering up those areas. What I do hope is where this bled out I do hope that that bleeds up into my leaves. So I'm going to start off with the yellow and I want more of the center lighter and then since we decided last week the sun was coming from this direction, I want more of the yellow on this side of the the trees. So again, this is my center point of the road coming in. And I'm lightly sprinkling. I don't know if you can see the little that I'm adding. What color did you say that was? That's lemon. Okay. So I'm using lemon, leaf green, Prussian blue. And I'm using the Prussian blue to add some depth. And as you can see, the trunks are starting to bleed out, which for some reason I really like that effect, how it, it does bleed a little bit. Now it's still pretty wet, so now I'm going to go in with my leaf green. And I didn't spray very much water over on this area, as you can see. So we'll need to spray water over there. So I'm going to try and protect the yellow areas just a little. So I didn't get down in this area very much. If you want, what you can do is you can do some negative painting. So I have my yellow and I can go in and do just a touch of negative painting in here if I want. And grab my leaf green. Drag that down into those areas. If I want to bleed those areas out a little bit, 
make it look more like leaves and grasses. You can spray it. You get a little heavy and it starts to run and you don't like that area running, just mop it up. So this is all pretty wet still, so I want to go in and add some more of my leaf green, get it down into that area where I did a little bit of the negative painting. More of the lemon, just to add some pop in there. Since I have that tree going up off the paper, I need to add some of the leaf area up in there. And again, using my hand to protect the area where I really don't need additional spray. So what I normally would do is kind of let this dry so I know more where I want to add the Prussian blue. But because we're doing this live, I'm going to head, go ahead and add this. Now what I want to do is I don't want this to be heavy. So I'm going to um, really sprinkle quite high. And we have a question over on YouTube from Barb and said, um, can you lift brush out off of the rocks by using a razor blade to scrape down to the um, white or the initial paint while the paint is wet on the paper? No, um, not on Stonehenge Aqua. I definitely would not use a razor blade on Stonehenge because it's so soft what I would do is I would go back in with my um, bleach and water mixture and lift. And we can do that in some areas so I can show you how that works. So. Jan, I have a question regarding yeah. the paper. Um, yes. No, I've never used the paper you're using, but I do have I do have some um, Waterford. Bockingford? Water, um, Waterford? It's pretty soft paper. Mm. So is that what you recommend basically for um, brush out? Well, the papers I've used, Bockingford, which is from the UK, they sell it here in the States. Um, Stonehenge Aqua, I've used Saunders. This is, this is Saunders. Okay, I love Saunders. Um, that's a nice paper. It seems softer too. Arches has a real heavy sizing on it. Um, I don't ha like how the water and bleach mixture really works on the arches paper. For me, it seems to break down that sizing. Now, I can go in and I can lift an area and then I can go back in with a color once it's dry and kind of paint over it on the Stonehenge Aqua, on the Bockingford, and on the Saunders. On the arches, it seems to break that sizing down. So if I go back in, it spreads. The, the pigment spreads once it's dry. Now, if you want that look, that's great. But if you're trying to keep a sharper edge, you may have difficulties um, with that. Um, 
it really basically comes down to what kind of paper you like, um, you know, and what you get used to. I, for some reason, fell in love with this Stonehenge Aqua. It's an expensive paper. Um, they have 140 pound, which is what this is. Don't ask me what that is in the UK because I'm not sure. And then they have a 300 pound, which is real heavy. They have it in hot press, cold press. I don't think they have it in rough. I don't remember seeing it in rough. Um, do you ever use hot press? I do, and I have a bunch of it to use. For some reason, I seem to always migrate to the cold press. What I use the hot press for is I'll lay a wash of color down and then I do colored pencil over the top of it because it's so smooth. It doesn't eat your pencils up. If you're using it on the cold press, boy, you go through pencils. And I don't know if anybody here does colored pencils, but it's layers upon layers upon layers of colored pencil to cover the surface. Um, so I don't know. It kind of gets to be what you're you're comfortable using and I definitely am not saying go out and buy Stonehenge Aqua that's just the paper that I like I don't know it's kind of what you get used to I think because years ago with just watercolor all I used was arches I swore by arches but then when I found brush out I seemed to really kind of migrate more to the the Stonehenge and Legion did send me some to sample and that's how I started using it um, Joanne Boone Thomas, she uses Bockingford because they make that over in the UK, I believe. And I started using that the very first, and that's really nice paper too, but I was having a harder time getting it back then when I first started. Um, and then Stonehenge, you know, came into existence. So that, that's how that all came about. So let me show you. Uh, let me grab this again is just bleach I put it in a little container um, I can spritz with it and then also I'm such a klutz I, if I had a big container of it I would have bleach everywhere is that just regular laundry bleach just regular household laundry bleach yeah okay thanks um, over in the UK I don't think they have bleach per se like that uh, most everybody over in the UK uses a product called Melton and if you go back to the third week that we did the lives um, I show how you can use Melton and it's a baby bottle sterilizer over in the UK and you can order the tablets through Amazon um, and it lifts it's really great stuff it's, it's not quite as strong as the bleach and when I bought this the only bleach that the household bleach that I could find at the time was um, concentrated. So this is really, really strong. So using a 50 50 mixture, you have to use a lot more water with what I have in this container. I use old brushes. Um, I treasure my good brushes. <laughs> so I really don't take a chance on, you know, hurting the, the bristles. Would just If I lost one of these brushes, I would just be devastated because brushes are so expensive nowadays. So this is just, I don't know where I even got this, an old scruffy brush. Not a good one by any means. And what I do is I just put a little bit of bleach on my board. And then you can either spray a little water, trying to get a little bit of mixture. If you were going to be doing a lot of bleaching, you could mix it up in a little container. You could even have a container that's already mixed with 50-50 bleach. But I want to lift a little bit of that color. Hopefully this isn't too strong. Can you see how it's lifting? Taking that back to the white of the paper. So 
I don't know if you can, can you see how that lifted in the road? So over in the rock area, you want to make sure your paper is, is pretty dry. Say I wanted to lift some of this gray area out. And I'm just kind of dabbing because I don't really want hard edges. You can see how it's it's making it lighter. Some colors, and depending on how strong the bleach is and how, what your ratio that you're using it, it doesn't lift it always back to the white of the paper, but it gives it a great color. So you could go in, I could go straight in and use this straight and say I wanted a highlight up in it's still wet um, say I wanted a highlight in right in here and I don't know if that's going to lift it back to the white of the paper probably not but you, can you tell how it's lifted the color So depending again on the color, um, a lot of this I went in with, if you remember, I used the Wax Resist Crayon from Color Craft. I used, uh, where is it? I used a piece of candle and I made highlights where the real white of the paper is that's where I went in with the candle and the wax resist put marks down and then it pushes the water and the pigment away but you can see how it's lifting the color on this one and that's pretty heavy bleach I mean I can smell it it's pretty strong So bleach now, doesn't once you do that, is it easy to paint back over that? Once it dries. Once it dries, it really, it seems to, for some reason, the bleach doesn't reactivate as much. Um, but if I would go in now and sprinkle or add color, where's my gray? That's, this one up here is still wet. Let's see what it does. A lot of times it'll bleach it out. So that's pretty dry. Let's go in and use my old brush. So I'm painting over where that bleach is. And it's still kind of wet, so it's, it's bleaching it out a little bit. But you're getting another color then in there. So it's pretty cool what you can do with it. Um, areas here bleached out a little bit. So if you wanted another layer on these rocks of color, you could go in and dab. You want more texture, you could go in and dab and sprinkle more brush out just to add that little extra layer of texture in your rocks you can also go back in and add more color here if your trees are too fused out you want say this one coming over the road darker then by all means once it's dry go in with your liner this isn't going to work because it's so wet. And bring some of those colors out. You can go in and, oh, that's really wet there. Find a 
drier area. It's pretty dry right in here. So I could go in and add another tree. You can see how it's wet and it's, it's fusing out. Maybe go in and just hit areas that you want a little darker that are poking through the leaves. Let me cover this over so I don't spill it. And I probably would go in with a little more Prussian blue in some of these areas just to add a little more depth. Just to give it a little more dimension, I guess would be a, a good So you can see, and Barbara, I don't know if you can see where it bleached out those rocks, where it bleached in the road. That's how I go in and I lift color. Um, on my goat, I used masking fluid for a lot of the lines, and then I went in some of these areas with a less bleach to water because I didn't want to lift the full color out and I lifted just to add a little more texture in some areas on the goat. The flowers, this was all yellow or the yellow ochre. So I went in with bleach and lifted the petals of the flower. Um, the same with The same with my orangutan. Um, I went in on his hands just to add highlights on his hands if I got too much blue. On his mouth I lifted a little bit. Now this is what's cool with Brusho. These two paintings and then I don't know if you saw the one I did today on the Facebook group uh, Brusho Fun. I did a um, a cow, couldn't think, a cow. And I used the same three colors. It's OST, Oast Blue, Violet, and Yellow Ochre. Now they look somewhat alike, but the colors mix. Like there's a lot more greens in this where the colors mix than in this one. So that's what I love about brush out is the different effects that you can get with it depending on how you go in and you mix things. Now I'm really curious, I want to see, and I can't, can't show it to you tonight, but the um, cow that I did, I'm mounting it on cradle board, and I don't know if you know what cradle board is, but cradle board, no, cradle board is... This is cradle board or birch board. This is a real nice smooth sheet of wood and then it has an, uh, like an edge on it. It's kind of like a canvas only it's made out of wood. I sealed the board and I sealed it with there's a lot of different things you can seal it with. I sealed it with this acrylic primer and extender by Golden, uh, GAC 100. I sealed it with two coats of that, and then it left it not quite as smooth, so I just took a very fine grit paper and just knocked down a little bit of that tooth that was on the board. Then I used this Liquitex matte gel, and 
I after the the sizing or the the seal was was totally dry I put that on and then I laid my paper my painting on and I have it weighted now and I'm letting it dry then I'll cut the paper down to size I'm going to spray it I believe with um, Krylon Kamar and the only reason I have that is I use that with alcohol inks to seal them just so that maybe the crystals of the brush -o don't activate then I'm going to seal it with a cold wax medium this is by Jacquard and it's D-O-R-L-A-N-D -D wax and it's quite heavy and I'll just kind of massage it on, let it dry for 24, 48 hours, depending on how thick I use it. And then I just take one of those, um, the rags that are lint free, and I'll just buff it once it's dry. And it'll get a nice kind of a shine. The more you buff it and rub it, the shinier it gets. And I'm going to seal it with that. And my daughter-in-law already claimed the cow, so... <laughs> The cow has a home when it's done, but um, that's a really nice painting. Oh, the thank you. I'm I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, but that's what I'm going to do with that one, just to try something different. Um, that way, it doesn't have to be matted and framed. And um, the Dorland has a UV in it, so that's you know it's um, archival, so. That's going to kind of seal it. You could actually even spray it with a, a UV spray if you wanted to and, um, you know, to make sure that it's protected. Because that also came up in conversation today on the Brusho Fun Group was about, is Brusho light fast? And what I said in my comment is you're going to get 101 different comments on it as to whether it's light fast or not. There's nowhere does Color Craft state that it's light fast that I can find um, but I've had paintings forever hanging on my walls and nothing has ever faded um, if you ask Joanne Boone Thomas who she's been doing brush -o for years and years and she says that she's never had anything fade I always tell people if somebody buys a painting I tell them Frame it under UV glass. Always mat it because the painting always needs to breathe. It's a watercolor. They need to breathe. So mat it. Frame it under UV glass just to be safe. And never, ever, ever, ever hang any fine art in bright sunlight, in direct sunlight. I don't care what the medium is. It can be stated by the company it's light fast. Over years of being in sunlight, there are colors that are going to fade. It's just, just happens. But those are what I tell people when they buy one of my paintings. Is that's you know how you take care of a painting. Never have had any complaint about a painting fading. I've never had one of my paintings fade. Um, I've had a painting hanging on the wall in here, and you can see by all of the lights, the windows. Um, I have a lot of light up here. In my studio and they don't they've never faded so that's all I can tell is my personal experience I don't know Has anybody online here tonight had anything that faded a brush oh mm -hmm. no I don't know I don't know but that's kind of what uh, what what's I'm doing with that uh, with the cow we'll see how he turns out it's gonna be an experiment so any questions, any more questions about this painting? And I'm going to kind of let it dry. I'll probably go back in and tweak a little bit. If everybody's fine with, you know, how it is tonight, we'll call this one done and move on to another one next week. Um, or we can bring this back out next week and kind of finish it up. If, if you know, whatever anybody wants us wants me to do. I'd like to see a finished version. Okay. All right. Well, we'll work on it a little more next week. It's too wet to do anything now, but I would go in and add more depth and color in this area. See how these areas are running out, and I kind of like that effect. 
probably go in and darken up a few more of my um, my trunks and just kind of play a little bit with it so we can do that next week so and I would love to see if you guys are doing this painting I would love to see you guys post them on the um, brush out fun group and share them also if you're on YouTube make sure you give us a thumbs up and you subscribe to the channel I'll have all the replays on the Fine Art Cafe Academy online under it's called brush out colors and I have the first three weeks where we did the swatches and then I have the first week when we did or the week that we did the rocks last week and then once this I'll put this one up there they're also on the um, our YouTube channel, the Fine Art Cafe Academy YouTube channel. So, um, Jean just Jean just showed her picture. That looked pretty good. Did she? Is it up there yeah. now? I'll have to go and look. I haven't seen it. Yeah. No, she just showed it on here. Oh, I didn't see it. Show it again. I was talking. I didn't see it. That's nice. Oh, I'm still not. Nice. Can you see it? No, I can't. Oh, okay. Let me go back. Oh, Jean, it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, look at that. It's my first attempt. Beautiful. With brusho. That's the very first painting with brusho? Yes. Oh. Kudos. That looks great. Can Thank I you. Like can I like say I did that one and you did mine? <laughs> no, I like <laughs> yours. <laughs> That's beautiful. You did great. Thank you. Yes. Barbara over on YouTube said they are all wonderful and amazing what you have done with the bleaching and the highlights. I would have never have guessed to use diluted bleach. You know what? Brusho is so staining. Um, Barbara, go in and watch the other two, three actually, videos that we did. And we go in in the very last one, and I use the Melton and the bleach. And it's this bleach here that I have, which is really, really strong. And it takes most of the colors back to white. But you'll see with the Melton that it doesn't. So it really gives a cool effect. I mean, look at this color here now, and I'd probably go in and lift some more so that I carry that color through. But that's such a cool color that the bleach lifted it back to. I don't know, I'm just, I just love brush out because it's so organic. It's, it just does amazing things. There's so many colors in it. Look at how this is all spread out and migrated out. I mean, you just don't get that with any other product that I've ever tried. You know, maybe there are products out there that would do something similar, but not that I've found. I just think it's it's really cool. I don't know. I just I just love brush out. And uh, I think people are just coming up with some of the most amazing paintings that, uh, and we have so many talented people on the brush Hole fun group we have just a bunch of amazing fun artists so again if you're not a member of the brush Hole fun group on facebook ask to join please answer the questions and we'll get you approved and um you just see what people are doing and, and post your work because we always love to see your work on there too so unless anybody has any other questions um let me know and then I think we'll call it a night. We're a little over our hour, I believe. We're at 8.45. And uh, we'll go back in. We'll do some more work on this next week then. And then we'll just kind of finish it up. And uh, I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend coming up. It's going to be in the 90s here where I live, um, which... <laughs> Where are you? I live in Ohio on Lake Erie. Um, okay. Little place called Port Clinton or Catawba Island. Um, yeah. Putin Bay. I don't know if anybody knows about Putin Bay. 
It's a little, an island out in the lake and um, it's almost like um, down in, what's the place down in uh, Louisiana where they have the beads and the Mardi Gras and all of that. It's kind of like that little- um, New Orleans. New Orleans, yep. And it's, it's kind of a smaller New Orleans. <laughs> It's, oh, that's so nice. We, yeah. yeah, we go over, walk around, and then we we head a home on the ferry um, at dusk. Cause oh, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Marlene, thank Have you. Have a good weekend, too. Yeah. And bye, everybody. All right. Well, you, too, and thank you. And Marlene, thank you so much. Marlene Silver on Facebook, and she said, your painting's beautiful. Jan, I can't wait to get some brush out to start playing with it. I need to learn how to use watercolor too. <laughs> well, I don't know which is harder, watercolor or brush -o, but um, brush -o can be, brush yeah, they're, they're different. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for being on with me tonight. I appreciate it. We'll get all of the replays up so that you can, uh, can rewatch or people who didn't get a chance to watch it. I will show you how my cow turns out after he is totally dry and he's waxed and sealed. And we'll again, we'll play with this more next week. So thank you everybody. Have a great weekend.